We'll get after it. This will be taken by Doogie Lagrone. He's a transfer from Colorado College. Now in his second season with Geneseo. Now you talk about the Knights. They're back NCAA tournament for the uh, seventh time. Six of those appearances have been since 2005. They're back in the semis for the third time. What an opportunity for this program that is ranked second in the nation. They've lost now in their previous two semifinal appearances trying to get that championship game for the first time. And I think that in each of those semifinals, Chris Schultz has learned something about his team. In 2014, they lose in the semis to St. Norbert, and Chris Schultz thought his team needed to get stronger. A couple of years ago, they lose to UW-Stevens Point and went on to win the national championship, and Chris Schultz felt that the team could have been a little bit faster, and he's elected to kind of run with the ladder angle when establishing the roster that he has right now. You see speed, you see skill all the way up and down the lineup. And you see a shot there for Tyson Empey, his third now of this game. Felix Brasser there for the cadets. We have Broussard on that outside, played it for Norwich, but unable to successfully clear. Empey back in the corner. Overcame Arthur Gordon. He was born in Tokyo, Japan, calls Edmonton his home. And now Geneseo, oncoming Broussard. Game-winning goals in each of the last now couple of games to talk about. Having a knack for the big-time finish. The Cadets with a NEHC Tournament Championship and a quarterfinal victory against University of New England. A game winner in overtime, 2.46 on it. So a 17.58 to go. Following the high stick. Into the penalty box for Norwich. Just came up high there. You got saw him get just a little bit underneath the fishbowl of uh, Henry Cleghorn. And that's where the penalty comes from. So an opportunity again here for the Knights. 0 for 1 on the power play. The fuck it off the skate of Doogie Lagrone. But Maxime Bordas in the penalty box for Norwich. As the puck flies out of play. Lagrone. Three power play goals to his credit. He's had six multi-point games this season. The second season with Geneseo. There's a look at David Robertson. Been a big part of this attack lately, too, with points in three consecutive and four of five. Out to the point with Lagrone. Giving away. Griffin. For what it's worth, Norwich without a shorthanded goal this season, although we'll talk more about that as we go along today because you have a couple of teams, Hobart and Stevens Point, coming up for our second semifinal who have excelled even with a man down. This left back. Coming across, put off the boards with Romano. We also have Conlon Keenan out there, the Herb Hammond Player of the Year award winner. Waiting, leaving it, and it's sent just behind David Schmid. And again, the puck will fly up and out. With 16.47 to go here in this second period. Look at Will Campion. Got a couple of looks. Credited with a shot to the defenseman in that first period. T.J. Dackery, part of this strong defense, has allowed a total of 47 goals all year. And they've come through with seven shutouts. And I was talking with a few people from Norwich in between periods. T.J. Dockery, Jake Erickson for them. The two junior defensemen that they have that were on the national championship team a couple of years ago. Those are the two guys that have to be the workhorses here for Norwich in the final 36 minutes or so. You've got to get high quality minutes if you're the Norwich cadets out of those two guys. That's your shutdown pair. Well, breaks put on by Schmid. 17 seconds left in the power play. As the night set up, high slot, Campion, out it comes. Has to go back after it. Final seconds will tick off. Back to full strength. So a couple of power plays now, not much to show for either opportunities. Now it's kept in after Gordon got a piece. 
Oh, and the check on Jake Erickson. Just he such a vitally important positive for the cadets to be able to get in off of a couple of Geneseo power play opportunities, shut them right down, limit the opportunities after maybe a little bit of early pressure, really kind of get your kill ratcheting up and better as the man advantage goes along. And a high shot for Colby Downs. It's brought in cleanly by McDonald. How about as we check out this look one more time for Colby Downs. Downs just peels off the blue line, deep shot, tries to fire it in shoulder high, and Devin McDonald, veteran goaltender right there, has no problem pulling it back to the crest in order to secure the rebound. Mentioned for the Knights trying to get into the championship game for the first time in program history. How about for the Cadets? 18th NCAA tournament appearance, 13th semifinal appearance. They have five championship game appearances and four national titles. You mentioned that they're last in 2017, which was their first since 2000. Ten in all, four titles have come since 2000. Oh, takeaway in front. Oh, looking for the rebound in front with Kobe Downs. A couple of good looks. You see some extra quick curricular activity thereafter in trying to protect Devin McDonald. Get knocked down to the ice, Jack Griffin. But my goodness, Kobe Downs, two quality chances here. Following the takeaway in the right slot. Down the middle off the retrieval, batting at it, trying to see if he can sneak it over the goal line. You see it come to rest here at his shoulder. Did it get over the goal line? Wow, that's a great stop by Hartman. Yeah, Hartman right there, and then also sliding down was Chris Perna to make sure to not cross that goal line. And they do, have, they do have video replay available here, so you saw there won't the be much to discuss. Extracurricular activity thereafter, knocking Jack Griffin down after trying to protect their netminder, Devin McDonald, but great chance in this shot block for Legron. But right there, though, for the taking for the cadets, following the takeaway in the slot area, offered by Kobe Downs, and then Jack Griffin right there as well. Looking for a potential rebound. Another face-off. That by far is best scoring chance we've seen first period. Plus four at Norwich. They scored 96 goals on the year. They tend to get about 31, 32 shots per game. This face-off to the left of Obron. Colthorpe. There for the Cadets against Keenan. And a face-off win for Geneseo. And from the point, shot blocked, back high slot lifted by Legron. Out it comes. Keenan, and then a trip up of Thompson. With 14.28 to go here in this second period. Off that trip up. Penalty will be assessed. This will be the first power play of the game now for Norwich. At 22% of the power play, 30-134. Official Derek Sylvester making the call. There you see the low dip in on the stick of Conlon Keenan, the takedown. And that's a textbook obstruction call that will put Norwich on the power play for the first time. And Derek Sylvester, Steve Benoit, the two referees with Joseph Gazzardi and Shane Gill and the two linesmen. High slot shot block for Sequan. He has three power play goals, looking for another opportunity. Instead. Off the pass, line up there for Brassard, who has come through with five power play goals. Again, the pass from Shequan nearly went just to the left side of McDonald, just outside the crease area. Shequan just so, so active on this first power play shift for the Norwich Cadets. Setting the wheels in motion, good rotation to the weak side. Broussard caught it clean and hammered it towards goal. A good save there on the low side by McDonald, right back to the point. And again, back at the line was Shequan as the trigger man to the back side in Bordeaux. Just couldn't hammer it in. Bordas, excuse me, could not just hammer that in on the right side post. He's come through with three power play goals this season. And a clearance for the Knights. Now Geneseo on the season at 89% of the penalty kill at 92 of 103. So some nice sequences for the cadets in this second period. But the score stays not up. Brassard. Kept it at the point, and dump right back in with this shot blocked. Brassard off the panning McDonald, and a shot and a goal! Oh, 
Kirk in the right spot to send it in. And the cadets strike first with 13.30 left in this second period. And what you're going to see here, one, the cadets never gave up on this power play, but the net front presence, the follow through, once the puck got into the dirty areas in front was just exquisite. You see the rotation of the backside, great great A chance for Broussard. The cadets never give up, and then Oderkirk able to sneak it in after it was tapped back to the front off a great extra pass there by Bordas. What I loved about that replay, did you see the reaction of Oderkirk on that first shot attempt by Broussard? He looked up into the heavens like, what do we got to do to score a goal? But he stuck with it. Puck came right back to him. He was ready to pounce. And he gives his squad the one goal lead off the power play goal. And great teams find a way to get those second chances. They see a close one, maybe not go their way, and they put the hard hat right back on it. An exceptional job there working the net front for the Norwich Cadets. Great skill level as well by Bordas. And awareness to know that he had that a little subtle little drop pass there open from in front of the left side post. Older Kirk with his seventh power play goal tops in the NEHC. Among the top 25 in the nation. And so Geneseo finds themselves in a rare spot. They don't score first. They did not score first on Saturday either. Had to play comeback. And eventually doing so. And they're knocking off Manhattanville after they erupted for four goals in that second period. But the Cadets. And will strike first after they had a couple of close calls earlier in this second period. But on their first power play chance of the day, of the game, again a finish for Brett Oderkirk, part of the Caffrey Zaw rookie team after being named an NEHC Player of the Week on two separate occasions this season. And that goal, by the way, for Norwich, just such a big confidence booster for them. They played a very stable, well-structured period through the first 20 minutes where they didn't allow Geneseo to really overwhelm them, but they didn't do a lot offensively either and needed to get that on track. That goal for the Cadets and that power play that they had, those sort of things will start to set things on the rails the way that they want to go offensively. And they seem like, Norwich that is, it seems like they have settled down here in this second period that they've made a couple of adjustments here. They've had the better of the play so far in the first now eight minutes of this second. The Cadets flies over the reach of Scott Swanson. Russell out of center ice. Skating ahead with Arthur Gordon. Back out it comes. Left off the wall by the Brennan Miller. Had a chance in that first period in front. This off the pads of McDonald into the corner. Back neutral ice on the back skate with Connor Swiston, the sophomore defenseman from Saskatchewan. In the corner with Ryan Burnett. The Cadets up that right side. Following the check attempt with Tanner Salisbury. Out of the ice comes Matt Burchill. He's at the point. On the windup, passing back into the corner, being set the cross, nice find, and a shot that goes high for Scott Swanson to the glove of Devin McDonald. Good find with Scott Swanson. He came in from this near side after a short little pass from Matt Burchill into the corner and then set the cross, and Swanson, glove by McDonald. Yeah, really stretching a lot of distance there on the pass out of the corner. Good hard zipper to the back side. Covers a lot of ground, creates a scoring opportunity, and Swanson there could have had McDonald dead to rights, but McDonald, to his credit, did a really good job of not flinching, gets the glove up at the right time, and pulls down a really, really pretty windmill save. Across that blue line, Campion. And into the wall he goes. And knocked into the wall there by Birchill. Athletic training staff will come out. Matt Burchill will be sent off with 10.46 left here in this second period. The officials here have him for a trip. Derek Sylvester, a longtime official, one of the representatives on this crew from out east, will make the call here. It will be a trip and a power play forthcoming for the Knights, but first and foremost, the fact that Campion is currently down. The junior defenseman. 
Three goals, 10 assists, 23 games played this season. Came up with an assist in the Suniac final. Gets back up to his skates. Hartman over there to help out. The team athletic trainer and a, off the ice, he will go and further medical attention will be given. As mentioned, Matt Burchill in the box now. Tripping the call. Third power play coming up for Genesee. 0 for 2 thus far with the man advantage. Mm. And just kind of a... Watch that right knee at Burchill. Lukey meeting there in the corner. Two guys converging on the point of attack. One gets a little bit of a step inside the other. There's the takedown, and that's really a tough break on the Norwich side to have that get called a penalty just by the way that it kind of all transpired, but they do get the takedown for the trip. And we see out there right now Conlon Keenan. Haven't said his name a ton. He's done the attack for a seal yet in this game. Earlier this season became the 27th member of the Geneseo 100-point club. He's on the faceoff here for the Knights. Romano out there, the power play unit. But Shequan, knocking out of the zone, controlled by Ferguson. MP. And that deflects off the stick of Ferguson and is taken away on the counter. Well, Downs had a look. And we'll stick with it. Now, Romano coming across. MP off the bottom of his blade. Lagrone. Yeah, Genesee gets back onside. Lagrone. Up his right wing. MP. And there's a shot. Keenan with a look that's going to be brought in by O'Bron. O'Bron able to come up with it, but a, a fine there for Conlon Keenan. That's, again, one of his few opportunities in this game. And what really got that going to a sneaky little twisting drop pass by Empey right at the line. That springs Keenan in behind the D. And he really didn't have much room to really kind of make a move across or anything lateral that would have opened up more net. O'Brun stays right with it. Square doesn't allow a rebound. That's a good, clean save on one of the best players in the entire country. Keenan with five shots on Saturday at a goal and an assist, including the, that goal being the game winner. And Geneseo's victory against Manhattanville. Schmid. Off the pass that comes from Russell. Russell asking for it instead. Comes out to Russell. Power play with 33 seconds remaining. And that's off the stick of Russell and Geneseo. The skate after it. It was dead by McDonald. In the attacking zone. In front yet Schmidt, but it got redirected. Pass was done for Schmidt, who's making the cut down the slot. Russell. Sequan. Final second will tick off, and another successful penalty kill for the Cadets now three for three. Ebozio asking for a long pass. Gordon there as well. Offside side will result in a faceoff just outside the cadet zone. For Geneseo. That was sent back in a faceoff victory for Carson Kelly. Now, you and I talked about this off-air before, and 8.32 to go here in this second period. You have two schools, two programs out east, making the trip here to Stevens Point, Wisconsin, separated by about 375 miles, give or take, about seven hours based on your drive time, your speed. But this is only the second time, all time, that these two teams are meeting in hockey, and both have occurred in the NCAA tournament. And the big thing is, I think, with the Division Three schedule, you're playing 25 games in the regular season, your conference schedules usually are so deep and so vast, unless you're playing in the WIAC, which only plays about eight conference games a year. But beyond that, you know, you're playing 16 to 18 conference games a year in most leagues. And 
So your non-conference dates are limited to begin with, and then you've got your scheduling relationships. You've got the like the guys, the teams that you like to play every year, and you try to continue those relationships and add to your schedule in other ways as well with things like travel. So these two teams, just one of a few pairs of teams out east that you'd be surprised they haven't played a, a lot, but, you know, that's the situation. First meeting back in 2014 in NCAA Tournament quarterfinal. 3-2 victory for Geneseo and advancing to their first ever at that time semifinal. Here down a goal. Traffic in front. Over skates Ryan Burnett. With twice run. The cadets on the pass to Christian Thompson. Thompson, he's one of the players that's come back. This cadets team has overcome some injuries. Thompson only had played one game until January the 4th. It's played now in 17 last 19. Miller, the flex in front bounces away from Burnett. Out of the zone. Long skate for Legron. Plays it off the wall. Across the blue line, Ferguson. Leaves it. Not sure if he's trying to play to himself off the boards or not, but either way, no harm done as he recovers back in the corner. Burchill, we're going to hold him in place. A trip up over the puck, but back to his skates comes David Schmid. And the puck off the netting. The protective netting will halt play with 6.25 to go in this second. A power play goal by Brett Oderkirk right now, the difference maker. And again, really kind of has added a little bit of life on the Norwich side. They played a stable but not overwhelming period in the first. And things really have kind of leveled out here in the second period. And you could argue that Norwich may have had the better of the play so far here in this middle frame. It's coming after an 8-3 shot differential in favor of Geneseo in the first and a goal! Kobe Downs in front, and the Cadets take a 2-0 second period lead. Just flushed it inside the right wing post. Mr. Consistency for the Cadets. 25 last year, another 25 this year in terms of his point totals. And just a good chance to set the wheels in motion from the left side there by Swanson Downs getting it right in front and follows up his own rebound. The persistence again at the net front paying off for the Cadets. Downs with his seventh goal of the season. He had one goal, a season high of seven shots on Saturday against University of New England. He tied that game just over nine minutes after falling behind a goal in that quarterfinal. Norwich now with a two-goal lead, 6.09 left in this second. So for the Knights, foreign territory now, down a couple. Team only has one loss so far this season, which came back on November 9th at Plattsburgh State, 3-2, a couple of ties. November 3rd against Buffalo State and against Oswego State on February 9th. In both of those games, they're down to the third period and eventually came back thanks to power play goals and tied those games at four. And right now, the Cadets are in rarefied air in a lot of ways, not just because they've gotten to this stage of the tournament when the last four teams left in the country, but here against the Geneseo team that has one loss the entire year, hardly anybody's been able to beat Geneseo, let alone slow them down. And so far, Norwich has done a pretty exemplary job of that and deserves to be considered among the best teams in the country for what they've been able to do this afternoon and what they've done up to this point in the postseason. Perna, but again, the cadets have possession. Down the length of the ice, icing will stop play. So a couple of goals here for the cadets. Looking to, and so far they have set out this Knights attack that, again, is averaging about five goals a game. It's an offense that has not been shut out since February 17th of 2017 by Plattsburgh State 1-0. That's 60 consecutive games with at least one goal, and they've had at least two in every game this season. Lots of hockey left, though. And 
And they have the ability to score in bunches. They tend to generate about 40 shots a game. Icing again with 5.22 to go in this second. Oderkirk and Downs. Each scoring goals for the Cadets. Oderkirk on the power play. Downs with his seventh. You know, his points in nine of the last 11. And this face off back in the Norwich zone to the right. Obron. Keenan. On the draw against Lewis. And a face off win for Norwich. Again, around the boards. Lagrone again will see Icing. Three straight. And again, this face off back in the Norwich zone. And the string of face off opportunities in the offensive zone here, that string of icings for Norwich, provides a subtle little opportunity for Geneseo to get something going. You can try out some different line combinations, make changes when the opponent cannot, and create different set plays if you wish. Anything to do to be able to get a look and start generating some positive momentum after falling behind a couple of goals. Not a bad look there for Ferguson from the point after the Keenan faceoff win. Lagrone up this right wing. Schmid outside the circle. You have Keenan out there as well. He's camped on the front. Schmid that went wide. Keenan on the rebound. Whistle will stop play as the net may have come free slightly. After it looked at involved, David Schmidt, and then he also had on the rebound a chance from a tough angle for Conlon Keenan. And really no surprise to see Geneseo counting on that leadership from their top end line here. The top end scores, the big ticket guys that have gotten them here all year. Schmidt there did a lot of good things to get himself in attack position. Held himself firm, above, firm along the wall, getting down towards the half boards, stayed above the puck, took it back off the pass into the slot in firm attack position. Just kind of twisted it there off the toe of his blade as it just kind of inched away from where it needed to go on target. But it was still a good looking opportunity for the Knights. Well, Devin McDonald, Dreamed of playing college hockey since he was 10. Where's number 34, Martin Brodor? Well, the senior. A couple of goals allowed. It's been a two period, a two goal second period for Norwich. After being only asked to, to make three saves in that first. Carson Kelly on the faceoff against Kobe Downs. Had a little bit of a delay as Norwich was allowed to make some wholesale changes off that stoppage. Bozio. Sent into the corner by O'Brien. Robertson unable to clear. Put off the inboards. Out of the slot. Salisbury. He'll wind up. Out with Russell. Russell got turned around, down he went, sticks with it. And now Russell taking more of a defensive approach. And the puck will slide down ice. Under four minutes left in this second that has belonged to the Cadets. Looking for more with Swanson with the takeaway, but giving it right back. Come up this right side, Burnett. Looking to drag it around to the point. Out of the zone. Swanson on the fly. Puck flies by him. And now Kyle Hartman. Crossing the right. Hartman will dump it in. That right side with that far side with Burnett. And right now the cadets with their structured methodology. They're doing two things really, really well defensively. They're slowing the, the Knights down, coming up through center ice, forcing them to dump the puck. I think that the cadets have done an exceptionally good job of that. And even when Geneseo has been able to carry, the cadets' defensive core, one through seven, has been able to stay gap sound and keep the play to the outside long enough to get the takeaway. How about that high shot for Christian Thompson? 
Off the end boards, a little touch there by McDonald. Long pass that gets by Ryan Burnett. Bison on the other end with 2.43 to go in this second. Look at Tom Obron. Now protect, looking to protect this two goal advantage. You now he talked about his role and how it's increased. He only played a game as a freshman. He split some time last year. Came on strong in the second half. Eventually got the start in the NEHC championship game last year against Hobart. Game that was in his control. 28 saves are set up through a couple of periods before Hobart pulled away in the last 15 minutes. Obron, though, coming through with some great international experience as well, playing for the, the French 18U and 20U national teams. And that's a tournament play experience that you really can't let replicate at the collegiate level. It's a pool play scenario. You get a chance to really kind of go out there and bond with a group of guys, play with different guys that you don't normally play with. And it really rounds you out into the mold of a more complete hockey player. Not to mention, you get to experience some international culture perhaps along the way, depending upon where the championship is. So. There's a few guys like that out there across the country. Tom is just one of them. Cheryl Pretorius from Elmira. He plays for the South African national team. There was a young lady from Elmira a few years ago that played for the English national team. And even all the way up to the Olympics with the Weidecker sisters at St. Scholastica on the women's side for Switzerland. So those opportunities for Division Three players, they may not be as numerous, but they are out there. The opportunity here for the cadets. Going to that second intermission with a nice two-goal advantage, if not greater. And offset the Arthur Gordon skate. Back out Legrone. I got by Legrone's outstretched stick, but it's kept in. Miller. Out it comes, and it skips out. But off the near board, but it's Norwich able to win that race. Beating Tyson Empey to the puck. Empey skates off. Swanson got a piece of Ferguson's dump-in attempt. And they get offside here against Geneseo. Cadets just continually doing such a great job of getting five men behind the puck. I think we saw it there on that centering pass just a second ago where it was a forward, Oderkirk, who actually was one of the players that had really committed to the middle there and absorbing the pass. So he got the tip on it and deflected it away. Romano, a Keenan in front. That one-two combo. Romano over with Schmid. Salisbury in front with Keenan. Salisbury again on the windup, had it blocked. Salisbury coming across. Russell. Russell again. Right now it looks like Swice done without a stick. The defenseman for Norwich. That's the other layer, layer of it here for the cadets as well. Not only do they have five behind it, they're blocking an awful lot of shots right now in front of Auburn. Not afraid to lay out. And the late penalty now will be assessed against the uh, cadets as an extra attacker coming on for Geneseo. Now that penalty will be assessed with 18.9 seconds left in this second. Following a trip. That's going to go against Carter Colthorpe. See that Eight, trip up? 18.9 to go. You just see Colthorpe lower it a little bit there on the zone entry. It was enough to get underneath the blades and send the attacker airborne a little bit. And this is kind of an oddity too, seeing Norwich now with four penalties against, but Geneseo, the top power play unit in the nation, has not been able to, to capitalize on these opportunities. Not yet at least. Ferguson looking to change that. And that will do it for period number two. There will be a minute 41 left in the Geneseo power play going into the third. But what a second period for the cadets. They get not one but two goals, including the first off the power play. 
Talk about making adjustments from one period to the next. After they were outshot by five in that first, they came out and they were the ones throwing the, the first couple of punches, so to speak, in this semifinal. The Cadets doing a much better job of starting to turn the defensive presence that they had all along into offense. That was, I think, the biggest piece of this, not to mention their ability to persist and can repeatedly follow up in the dirty areas. When a scoring chance doesn't go their way, they don't get rattled, they don't get discouraged. They follow it through and see it through to the conclusion. And the Knights, in their defensive zone, they've been okay, but they've lacked that attention to detail that Norwich has had on the attack. And that's why the Cadets have leveraged their two periods. Well, the scoring began on the power play. Brett Oderkirk, look what I found, able to come through with his team bet 15th goal of the year, 7th on the power play, and then it was Kobe Downs and a two-goal lead for the Cadets through two on NCAA.com. Look at this place we've made. Something here is taking shape. It feels like a tidal wave in my heart. Find your true north only in Minnesota. Nice shot. <laughs> Thanks. I know you and your wife have been arguing. Yeah. You know how you've been talking about how those old spice body washes are for you? Yeah. Saying stuff like men have skin too? Yeah. Man, I have to come clean and just say it. I borrowed your Old Spice moisturizer with shea butter from your shower. That's it? <laughs> this body wash is all for us men, man. <laughs> Shoot. I got the yards again, kid. Uh -huh. Here they come. It's not your fault. Wireless networks, like announcers, should never be just okay. AT&T is America's best wireless network, according to America's biggest test. I got the yards again, kid. Uh -huh. Here they come. It's not your fault. Wireless networks, like announcers, should never be just okay. AT&T is America's best wireless network, according to America's biggest test. That mascot is putting on a duck clinic out there. Yeah, but they're cheating, Ken. Why are they the only ones who get to use a mini trampoline? Wireless networks, like announcers, should never be just okay. AT&T is America's best wireless network, according to America's biggest test. I was awoken by the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. She was clawing at the glass. I was hypnotized. I used hypnosis on him. What We Do in the Shadows premieres Wednesday, March 27th on FX. Colonel Sanders, your Kentucky Fried Chicken is delicious. What's the secret recipe? If I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> the Colonel's secret recipe. You can eat it, but you can't know it. Coop the tires on the ground. Go round and round. Round and round. Round and round. Your tires matter. So count on Cooper, an American company since 1914. Tires on the ground. Go round. I love that it smells fresh like the beach. So fresh. But I'm trying to read. Airwick, new Pure Beach Escapes.
Ah, thanks. I know you and your wife have been arguing. Yeah. You know how you've been talking about how those Old Spice body washes are for you? Yeah. Saying stuff like men have skin too? Yeah. Man, I have to come clean and just say it. I borrowed your Old Spice moisturizer with shea butter from your shower. That's it? <laughs> those body washes are for us men, man. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Phil, any predictions for tonight's game? Glad that you asked, Ken, because I actually brought some tarot cards. Oh, for divination. Wireless networks, like announcers, should never be just okay. AT&T is America's best wireless network, according to America's biggest test. I'm what's known as a psychic or energy vampire. We either bore you... I'm better now. I was a little sick this weekend. ...or we enrage you. What We Do in the Shadows premieres tonight at 10 on FX. Colonel Sanders, your Kentucky Fried Chicken is delicious. What's the secret recipe? If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. The Colonel's Secret Recipe. You can eat it, but you can't know it. You gonna make me turn back, 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 way back to the old me. You don't walk on my soul with me. You gonna make me turn back, 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 way back to the old me. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the ILX. It's not just the ships, the armor, or aircraft. It's the will to fight and determination to win. Found inside every Marine. Battles won. The Road to National Championships runs through NCAA.com. It's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place. NCAA.com and the NCAA Sports app.
Matt Mendel alongside Ray Biggs at D3Hockey.com inside KB Willett Arena in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. On to the third period in our first semifinal of the 2019 NCAA Division III Men's Ice Hockey Championship. And so far, the Cadets, uh, Norwich with a 2-0 lead on Geneseo, a team that's only trailing for the third time going into a third period this season. And they're 0-1-1. and in the previous two occurrences. So a bounce back into the third for those guys in a second period that was controlled by the Cadets who outshot the Knights 10-7. Just rarely charted territory for the Knights and they'll have to find a way to recover after a period that really took the gas out of their tires. See the second chance opportunity, a little foot back in Oderkirk, able to score in the power play, 6-3 into the second period. Maxime Bratis able to uh, Bordis able to come through with the assist. And then here comes goal number two. It came 13.45 in. Kobe Downs, Scott Swanson, and TJ Dockery on the assist. And that's where we stand through 40 minutes of play. So goals from Oderkirk and Downs. And then the assist so far for Bordas, his 14th helper, Swanson and Dockery. And a couple of common threads between these two goals. One, both of them were second chance opportunities for the cadets as they followed things through their conclusion, as I've referenced before. Another aspect of this, they've got some of their big guns on the board. Oderkirk, Kobe Downs, those are two of their top three scorers for the year getting engaged and involved for the Norwich Cadets. And it really makes Cam Ellsworth with his lineup and his line chart look good that he's playing his top scorers on separate lines and really making it difficult to account for just one or two groups of guys on the ice, but really having to go out there and account for three different lines because there's a home run threat on every line. Cam Ellsworth, the first year Cadets head coach for Geneseo. Yeah, Dewey Legrone. Ferguson bouncing puck into the corner for Andrew Romano. Ferguson. He has had points in the last three, five of the last six, and seven of the last nine, including two goals and five assists of the last now two games for the Knights. Lagrone going across the way for Ferguson. Lagrone. Give me that right circle, trying to go back out to the point. Now does. Lagrone coming across for Ferguson as the attack sets up for SUNY Geneseo. Ferguson. That got deflected up. And off of Lewis. Ferguson blocked again, and then Ferguson taken down hard by Lewis. On the counter, Griffin, he goes high and wide. I haven't said his name a lot, at least not in that second period, but Jack Griffin, a factor in that first. Also of note from that second period, one key component out of the Geneseo lineup, lost to, to injury, was Will Campion. I haven't seen him return since. Final seconds taken off, too, by the way, in the power play that currently exists for Geneseo. I was following the trip that went against Cole Thorpe, 1941 in that second, and now the Knights are 0 for 4 on the power play. And that just makes the sledding a little bit tougher for the Geneseo Knights at this point in the hockey game. You get that spillover power play with a lot of time to plan for it going into the third period. It's a chance to generate momentum for your side. And really, I think your best chance to mo generate momentum down a couple of goals going into the third period. And Norwich came out like they had a plan there. They really did a good job mitigating the pressure from Geneseo, not allowing much to get to their net front. And that's a huge, huge, huge tail end of the kill for the Cadets. They've been impressive, the Cadets, on the penalty kill in this one. Again, the quality of chances on the power play for Geneseo have been very limited, perhaps to a Tyson Empey look in that first period. Throwing a high stick. 17.53 to go here in the third. Winner gets either University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, or Hobart. We'll meet in our second semifinal puck. We'll drop at 8 p.m. Eastern here from KB Willett Arena. One of the hottest tickets in town. Not a seat to be had for that one. Your seat here on NCAA.com. And Robertson. Brassard. And Chris Perna able to take it away for Geneseo. He'll give it right back and does. High shot again lifted by Jordan Hall on that takeaway from that right circle. 
That was kept in by Boucher. He's had four goals, two goals. Including the game winner back against Castleton on the 26th of January. A face off here with 17 17 to go. Devin McDonald there for his second as the puck came through his net front for a moment, uh, channeling a little bit of his inner Ron Hextall. He dove out probably about eight feet to play the puck. McDonald, the four year starter. I think he'd prefer to be Martin Brodor, but I, I get the point. Most oh. definitely another good puck handling goaltender in his own right throughout a lengthy National Hockey League career. And not surprised that McDonald says that he patterns his game yeah. after one of the greats of all time, especially after that move a moment ago. Into the corner. Good press on the backside from Empey. Not allowing much room to maneuver. And now Empey behind the Norwich goal. Knock it free. Nearly by the stick of Mara. Anthony Mara out there right now for Geneseo. Lewis. Legron. For the Knights. Across neutral ice. Ferguson, knocked out of the air. Gordon with Ferguson, and now the back skate with Legron. Option on this right side, that with Williams. And Noah Williams in front, lifted. Oh, yeah, Noah Williams, but also with Christian Thompson. A couple of options for Norwich in front. Geneseo committing heavy personnel to the attack there at the other end, and it almost cost them as the cadets were able to blow the zone, get out flying the other way. Good saucer pass to the back side, got knocked down in front initially, and you get a chance in front that just got elevated a little bit too high over the bar. A lot of air underneath that, and then the penalty call drawn. Boarding yet Arthur Gordon. So Norwich on the power play for only the second time. They capitalized the first time on a power play goal that was scored by Oderkirk. Give him a cross check. So Arthur Gordon into the penalty box here for Geneseo. Oderkirk in front. Score! Kobe Downs, along with Maxime Bordis, in front off the find from Oderkirk. And a second power play goal for the Cadets. Has him up 3-0 in this third period. And again, just another clean transition to the attack. Good retrieval out of the feet by Oderkirk. And then a clean backside feed. As all alone at the front of the net there was Bordas to be able to elevate it past the glove of McDonald. McDonald there with a great last-ditch effort. It just wasn't enough. And, Ray, how appropriate because the first power play goal was Oderkirk on an assist that came the direction of Bordas. Now it's Bordas on the pass from Oderkirk. So return to the favor, both scoring on the power play, but now the Cadets with a three-goal lead. They're two for two with the man advantage. We have played nearly five third period minutes. Norwich, number three in the Pairwise National Rankings, number four in the USCHO.com, and D3Hockey.com with Norwich at number three. Right now, leading the second ranked Geneseo Knights. Only lost one game, they came in. Winners of five trade on beat over the last 23 have not suffered defeat since a 3-2 setback on the 9th of November. They've not been shut out since February 17th of 2017. 60 consecutive games with a goal. Perna. And the Knights now going to be challenged, I think, not only because they're down by three goals, but also they're going to be challenged to be able to try to commit resources to the offensive attack while also not letting another guy get behind them like they've already let a couple of times here in this third period. They've had some real danger with guys getting behind them, including the third goal. Empey, across the blue line. 
Went to take the shot, but got stuck underneath the bottom of his stick and somehow deflects on in. A goal for Geneseo. And they're down 3-1 with 14-01 to go in this third. Can't wait to see how this one went in for Henry Cleghorn. After the attack began with Tyson Empey. Look here, Empey whips on the shot. Well, stick play away from the net. And then it got thrusted in after the fact. Yeah, Cleghorn looked like he got a piece of it after you had Ryan Burnett, some traffic just to left to uh, Obron. Hard to tell from that angle, but looked like Henry Cleghorn may have gotten a piece of it. A little bit over from where most of the action was centered. Under the stick there of Mara. And look at the jump now in the legs of the Geneseo Knights. That goal, their first of the game after they had that first period where they weren't able to get something despite the fact that they had the better of the chances. That second period where they looked a little flat. That goal kind of setting some wind back in their sails here at a point where they really need it. Getting towards that midpoint of the third period, they trim it back down to two. Topico on the turn. Ferguson. And you're right, extra bounce on the step right now. The Knights coming out, trying to leave it in front. Of another goal. This score in front. Tapped on in by Carson Kelly. It was a great free feed there by Bozio to spring him to the front, but he almost let him. A little bit off target, and it was a great adjustment at the front of the net. Adjustment of speed in the skates there that allowed him to hammer that home. Don't look now, but in a span of 61 seconds, the Knights have scored twice. They're right back in this semifinal. Bozio, down underneath an outstretched stick. You see a really subtle adjustment of the speed there by Kelly just to make sure he didn't overskate it. He turns laterally, and that opens up a really clean window for him to tap that behind Obrun. Well, as you saw, had a piece of it, and Kelly, as you mentioned, able to stick with it and guide it in, back in. And it's a one-goal game. Well mentioned, the Knights can score in bunches. They average five goals a game. They scored now at least two goals in every game. And from facing a shut-up potential to now being right back in this semifinal, down one with 12.49 to go. They try to find their way to the championship match for the first time in program history. The cadets trying to hang on and get back to the championship game for the sixth time. 3-2 the score. It was 2-0 Norwich through two. Legrone. So two and 61 seconds. Looking for more and Obron. Now seeing some pressure continue to come his direction. It's just amazing how sharp the momentum swings have been in this game. This is the only the second all-time meeting between these two, by the way. And it's interesting to kind of examine back at the history of this series when you consider that you go back to that quarterfinal at Ira Wilson Arena in Geneseo a few years back, back in 2014 on the road to Lewiston. The Knights were also down by a couple of goals in that game before they got the big turnaround. Tyler Brickler with a natural hat trick to win it for Geneseo. And we're seeing the potential for a similar turnaround here. And the first two of that natural hat trick came off the power play. So Norwich looking to hang on. They're up 3 nothing once upon a time. Miller in the corner for Geneseo. Thompson across center ice. Swanson. Please impress with his speed in this one. Scott Swanson, the sophomore from Wheaton, Illinois. And Swanson also a guy with a very, very high IQ as well. Not only a hockey IQ, a sophomore that's really developed well for the Norwich Cadets, but last night he was also the winner of the NCAA Elite 90 Award, which is, of course presented to the highest grade point average at the championship final sun.
And I know the Cadets, the last time they were in the semifinals, I believe they won that award back in 2017 as well. They had one of their representatives take it home back then. Epi trying to take it away here and going to slide. It was Taryn Lewis. Over 100 shots now to his career. And again, the goal coming free. Happened a couple of times now on this end of the ice. So started off with a goal. Well, you had Carson Kelly scoring the second for Geneseo, but Henry Cleghorn indeed credited with the the first for the Knights. Had one goal and one assist last Saturday against Manhattanville. Burchill. Mara. At center ice, Empey making the turn to the outside. Gets across the blue line, looking to leave it back to the point. Now instead we'll spin around and get a shot that deflects off glass. And the clearance again for the cadets. Able to put, or at least attempted to put Lewis and his speed in motion. But again, icing. He had Russell down ice for Geneseo. And the faceoff will take place all the way in the Norwich zone. That's the left of Tom O'Brien. And when I talked to Cam Ellsworth earlier in the week, one of the big things he said about Tom, especially at this point in his career, being a first-year full-time starter, is that he gives the, t the team a belief every night that they have a chance to win and gives them the freedom to go out, make plays, and really get on the attack the way that they like to. And they have the confidence to know that if they get a bounce over a stick or somebody loses an edge out there, that Tom will be there to bail them out. And he said that's about the most glowing thing that you can say about a guy. Well, Salisbury with his latest look. Face off now to the left to O'Brun. Shots were at 15 13. Geneseo through two. They have again picked it up on the attacking end here in this third. Russell. Now across to the right. England and Thompson. Down he goes. And a penalty coming up off the trip. This will be the fourth tripping call of the game. And that will go against Salisbury for the Knights. Just reached in underneath, comes through right wing neutral zone. And Salisbury there just gets caught kind of pivoting back towards the wall there. Really wasn't even trying to power through and play the puck by the looks of it. Was looking back to the board just to make sure that he wasn't going to get a chip behind him. Now the Knights penalty kill unit trying to ride to the occasion. They're 0 for 2 so far. The Cadets have found success with the man advantage. And one of the things you look for consistency in officiating, one of the things we've seen today is that they have had a consistently tight precedent with, resor with resolve to what they're calling on the obstruction. Most of the penalties we've seen today have been hooks or trips. Right now, a Maxime Bordas power play goal, your difference maker. Oderkirk had the assist. For it's worth, the Knights have four shorthanded goals right now. On defense as Bordis looking to leave it in front. Right there was Felix Prasar, the second team all captain Donnery. Downs. It's off the pad of McDonald. Out of the zone. Sequan. Oderkirk. Dragged high slot. Shot off the pad for Brassard. And back into out of there. Cleghorn able to clear it. Shequan with 53 seconds left in the Norwich power play. Big clear there for the Knights. Make sure that you're able to rotate out and on a new unit. Well, the pass from Dockery. And Swiston covered up by McDonald. 8.50 to go. 37 seconds left on the tripping call against Salisbury, who... Came into the most penalized night this season. That being the this being the 14th time he's been sent into the penalty box. As we get a look at Devin McDonald there, I also got a chance to talk to him earlier this week. And what may be next for him after this championship? He's locked in right now on trying to win it all for the Geneseo Knights. 
one of the areas he mentioned to me he was looking to play possibly professionally in Europe down the line really looking hard at Italy after getting a chance to study abroad there well now trying to come up with a big save yeah Taryn Lewis looking for a wraparound job instead Dockery coming across the way and having to adjust Swightston Play back out to this right point. Dockery. Twice standing the fucks over a stick beyond the blue line, and the power play is over. So back to full strength with eight minutes and nine seconds left in regulation. And the puck flies out of play. This faceoff will take place just outside the night zone. Colthorpe on the draw against Keenan. And Icing will again stop play with 8.02 to go in this third period. Ferguson rushing that one just a little bit, looking back cross ice to see if he can make the connection deep into the neutral zone. And another great faceoff win, though, by Conlon Keenan there just to get the cadets chasing them a little bit. Now they'll be challenged again to do that, but this time they'll be pinned back coming off of the icing. They can't make changes here. And we'll see if the Knights can set the wheels in motion a little bit more cleanly the next time around. Yeah, Keenan able to win that faceoff to Ferguson. And now Schmidt on coming. Up this right side. In the neutral zone. Knocked off the stick of Thompson. Sent up this right side by McDonald. He's going to take advantage of a couple of personnel changes for the cadets. Dockery. Now Norwich. Again, we'll dump it in. High over the reach of McDonald. Able to adjust. Comes across, and McDowell just got enough of it to control it for the Knights. And as this game goes along, and we see it more and more, including probably twice here in the last couple of minutes, Devin McDonald just so absurdly comfortable playing a role in the breakout, getting a stick on things and playing the puck. He looks as comfortable as I've ever seen a Division Three netminder. Well, Russell, Clegghorn. That right circle, leaving it into the corner. Russell takes the shot now. Look, to, not sure if that was a pass to Cleghorn, but either way, the fuck's off the end boards and then bounces back out and is covered up by Obron. That before further damage can be done. He had Henry Cleghorn. He was in front. Cleghorn with a goal. Points now in four of the last six. Obron trying to hang on. What once was, I'm sure what felt like a comfortable three-goal lead. Has dwindled down to one. Lots of time left, and the pressure continuing to mount. Geneseo, one with more confidence. Now trying to take the puck. Russell does just that, but had to take it off his stick. Hall, left circle. Hall looking to leave it in front on the turn. Sent back by Broussard. And got away from Serpico. And at center right with Oderkirk. Mara up to the point. We have Gordon on this near side. That got away off the stick of Oderkirk. And Geneseo. Up this left wing, Mara, across the blue line. We'll leave it for Empey. His shot, that got blocked. Perna, able to keep it in. Tyson Empey. That right point with Hartman. Second effort, no. And Gordon, now trying to elude the oncoming Noah Williams. Gordon here for Geneseo. The second ranked Knights. So for five minutes left in regulation. Geneseo had that big jump a few minutes ago to get this back to a one goal game, but it seems like things have mellowed and evened out a little bit here. Like the flow of this game through the final five minutes, the next goal is huge, but the flow of this game still feels like it's up for the taking late. Well, Erickson 
But that's not the case as Norwich clears. The Cadets who have won 14 straight on, beaten over their last 18. Trying to hang on and Coach Cam Ellsworth, first season at the helm. What if that coach in program history replacing the legendary head coach in Mike McShane, who retired following 23 years at the helm. But like Cam Ellsworth, I will say, does come from a position of success of his very own. Of course, the legendary career of Mike McShane, one that won't be soon replaced around Northfield, Vermont. But Cam Ellsworth comes from a successful culture under Norm Bazin at the University of Massachusetts Lowell, which was a very, very successful team in recent years, including a run deep into the NCAA tournament back when they had Connor Hellebuck in goal. Yeah, third place finish in 2012-13 among their five NCAA tournament appearances. And he knows what Obron's going through right now, former goaltender at Michigan Tech, Coach Ellsworth. And right now, it's just all about protecting a one-goal lead for the Cadets. Downs has a goal here this afternoon. Cleghorn on the faceoff for Geneseo. Lagrone. It will not get down at the point. Trying to keep it in. And instead, the puck will find the Norwich bench area. There's Ryan Burnett. And I know you were impressed with his play, especially in that second period for the Knights. And he's been overwhelmingly active. I think he's really done a good job of making smart decisions when transitioning the puck, particularly up at the offensive blue line. He's been hunting pucks out there all afternoon. The graduate of the Shreveport Mud Bucks of the North American Hockey League, a team that won the Robertson Cup not all that long ago. That's the champions of that league in Tier 2 in USA Hockey. He's a really good-looking player that should only add more to his repertoire as his career evolves here for the Geneseo Knights. Puck off the ceiling. Three fifty-eight to go, and I'm venturing against for the cadets. That doesn't seem like that clock is is ticking fast enough. Back in the Norwich zone to the right here of Obron. The top line for Geneseo back in the ice, led by Conlon Keenan. It'll be sent out of the face-off, replaced by Schmid. Ferguson was waiting for it, but instead Keeney will send it across and zipped on by. It's Schmid. Back into the corner. That from Legron. Here comes Broussard. Boy, McDonald coming up big. Going to scramble into a setup here for Norwich. But Felix Broussard. And right circle, turning, trying to find an angle. Broussard back into the corner. That was kept alive by Boucher. Boucher had that chance just a second ago. What robbery there by McDonald to jump forward after the backside feed and a really good rush ahead by Broussard. Found the puck in open ice, hunted it through a body, played all the way through and had a great chance. Salisbury with a great chance here. But take another look here at Devin McDonald able to keep this a one-goal deficit. Broussard all playing all the way through. Great feet. Swept it aside to the left. And Boucher just never really struck it pure. But there was a good gap to have an initial opportunity by the looks of it before McDonald just slid over and shut the door. He is very, very good post-to-post. -post. Very explosive. Well-positioned. Doesn't get beat very often. Boucher looking for his first goal since February 2nd. Nearly came up with that back-breaking finish. Kelly. Helping him make this a one-goal game. In the right spot there to take and score the Oberon clear attempt. Would have been a two-goal third period for Geneseo after they were down three once upon a time. No score after one. It was 2 nothing. Norwich through two. A couple of power play goals for the Cadets. Shequan. A nice job defensively once again. Gordon. 
Show some speed. Stick lost by Sequan. Now the backscape by Hartman. Down to 148 to go in this third. Geneseo, that's taken off the stick of Legron. Getting back Ferguson. Left back, high slap shot going high for Ryan Boucher. Looking for a rebound. And Boucher again. Right in the mix for Norwich. After the windup, just outside that blue line. With a minute 34 to go in this third. Face off to the right now of McDonald in the Geneseo zone with first the timeout being taken as Geneseo will converse with a minute 34 to go. Also a decision time win to eventually pull Devin McDonald from the ice and get that extra attacker on. And this one goal game that will see Geneseo down going into the third period for only the third time this season. 0-1-1 one, and one in the previous two instances and again right now as it sits Brett Oderkirk has an assist that was the game winning goal for Maxime Bordas he was able to score after he picked up an assist on an Oderkirk goal that got the scoring started way back 6.30 into the second period and it's amazing how much the momentum of the game the complexion really kind of turned itself over here in this third period after Geneseo looked probably as out of it as they've looked this entire year. This is a team that's had so much life, so much energy, so much exuberance, and the Norwich Cadets with the high-quality game plan and just great execution in that second period really took them out of that before they were able to swing it back. So out of this timeout, I have a feeling here the principal item that Schultz has gone over with his charges trailing a goal, chasing a goal here in this third period He's probably looking for the timing to pull. I imagine if they win this draw and transition to the attack, he's coming out. As soon as they have it clean up front. With the high stick here, the minute 28 to go, and McDonald is skating off. Empey onto the ice, so the extra attacker is on for Geneseo. With a minute 28 to go. And they've gone full pull. They're not going to try a conditional here with 128 to go. Not leaving him hanging. They're going to have the extra attacker loaded right up. Keenan wins this face off. I was trying to find Empey. He was intercepted by Noah Williams. Now it is lifted down ice. Norwich looking for their seventh empty net goal of the year. Trying to put the finishing touches on this one. Lewis. And instead, Legron. Keenan. Up this right side. Off Schmidt. Keenan coming over to help out. And again, the puck wobbles down ice with under a minute to go in this third. Going to complete the comeback. Keenan. Schmid. That's going to go wide for Romano into the corner. Empey. Schmid. Along with Romano. Another long skate. And that will be called for icing. Legron was going after it for Geneseo. 40.5 seconds left. Back into the Norwich zone. Keenan. On this faceoff against Teron Lewis. Ferguson. That was found at the last second by Romano. Keenan. And now clear. And this puck goes in. How about the distance of that empty netter with 28.6 seconds to go? And Norwich with a 4-2 lead. The crazy thing on that one was it was almost like the Norwich clearance man was looking to the empty net as a secondary target. He actually punched that off the bench side stanchion as we get another look at it here. And it took a wobbling carom. That was cleared from in deep and it jumped right off that red pad above that red pad on the stanchion of the Norwich bench and then wobbled all the way in towards goal. And they are taking a moment to talk about this just to make sure that they didn't feel it contacted the bench and they will call it a goal. Was that David Robertson from that distance? That's a full 200-foot goal there on the empty net. 
four to Norwich. Their seventh empty net goal of the year. They've now scored 100 goals collectively this season. Downs and Keenan. Final 25 seconds. Robertson, in fact, critter with the goal for the Cadets. His fourth of the year. He now has points in four consecutive. Or didn't. Three straight and four or five back in late January, early February, but now gets his first point since February 1st and his first goal since January 29th. And the Cadets hang on for the victory. Norwich with a 4 2 result. And they move on to the championship game tomorrow night, their sixth championship game appearance, and their first to bring home the title back in 2017. The Cadets with a big semifinal victory here as they return back to the national championship game. And this victory for the Cadets kind of mirrors what the course of the season kind of has been for them. They've been challenged at times this year. They thought they'd be very much challenged by this Geneseo side, and they were. And the Cadets, what they've done best this entire year is they've blocked out any potential difficulty, whether that be the opponent, whether that be the injuries that they dealt with early in the year, the coaching change. They blocked all of those things out, remained committed to the task at hand, and that commitment to the task at hand showed in their execution today. It allowed them to get a big jump and the 3-0 hole that Geneseo got put in. The Knights, to their credit, they're a resilient bunch. This is a group that for four years, especially the senior class that had to deal with so much when they were freshmen, this is a group that has come a long, long way over that time from their last national semifinal appearance. And they dug deep and held tough throughout the third period to kind of get back on the horse so to speak but they just could not land that deciding blow that equalizing goal that possibly could have sent this game into a completely different direction but the cadets the attention to detail through the majority of the game was absolutely spot on maxime bordas with his third game winning goal of the year upping the cadets record to 23 four and three they've now won 15 consecutive unbeaten over the last 19 the ninth season coming to a close at 25-2-2, and their first loss since the 9th of November. And so Norwich will play either University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, or Hobart. That semifinal comes away with the puck being dropped at 8 p.m. Eastern back here on NCAA.com. From my broadcast partner, Ray Biggs, Matt Mendel, so long from Stevens Point for D3 Men's Ice Hockey.